Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am so excited for the conversation we are about to have today because I am joined by Audrey Rose and we are talking about burnout and burnout is one of those things, whether you are a stay at home mom, a working mom, a mompreneur, any capacity, it can impact every single person. So with that being said, Audrey, I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Me too. I just love this. And I love this topic so much. Well, it's, it's, such, it's, it's needed. We need yeah. to have more conversations like yeah. this because it's it's almost an epidemic that's happening, Honestly, you know, with yeah. our mental health. Yeah. Really. And we're just shoving it under the rug, you know, right. so it's, it's important. Yes. Awareness yeah. is step one to change. So yes. Audrey, tell us more about yourself, who you are, yeah. what you do. And oh, who's... where to start right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so first of all, I'm a nurse. That's my day job and I'm a dog mama and she's joining me here. I just love it. Um, I have a podcast called the ready to rise podcast and Originally, my podcast really started when I had kind of like a big breakup, you know, a few years ago, and I decided like, wow, I have all the check boxes on paper, and I've done everything, and everything looks so good on paper, but I'm not happy. I I just felt so misaligned. I had started my career as a nurse. I had all the things, and it just didn't feel right, so I kind of like big thing. I found the engagement ring that this guy was going to propose to me with. And my heart sunk. I was like, this cannot be my life. And massive changes ensued. And, you know, I moved back home to Sonoma County, um, which is in California on the coast. And I just like love it. And life was better. But then the pandemic hit. And at first I was like, wait, I, I don't feel quite right you know, things are a little bit off because I was a nurse. I did COVID nursing and I was one of the leaders of our unit that was all for COVID. I basically ran our COVID unit here. And I was like, I just feel so off again. What is going on? And I didn't want to say anything about it at first. And so that's kind of where the topic, that's why the topic of burnout is becoming so important to me because I felt scared to talk about it. I felt ashamed. How can I be a lead? of this unit? Or how can I even have this podcast about wellness, showing people my journey? And now all of a sudden it's doing a 180. I was like, this is not okay. Um, And then the minute I opened my mouth and I started talking about how I felt and the things I was seeing and what was going on, it was like, wow, I'm not alone. And I can heal from this. And I started to learn Hey, my healing journey from before was completely different. And I still have all those tools in my toolbox and I'm still using them, but now it's time to learn a different thing and I need to learn how to tackle burnout. And so now that I'm getting through that, I mean, I'm still healing from my burnout journey, but I'm realizing there's such a need for people to learn these tools. So now that's like my new mission is to just give as much of these resources and tools and everything I can to others who might need it right now to help kickstart their burnout journey. That is incredible. Oh my gosh. I, I just can't imagine having gone through what you did, especially, you know, during the pandemic, not knowing everything that we know now on the front lines of it. I mean, that had to be so just unnerving Uh, and scary. And yeah, you just put your nose to the grindstone and you just do it. Yeah. That's that's the problem. And that's what led me to burnout. And I, It's funny. It's not funny, but it's in hindsight. Um, You know, everybody like my mom, right? She's just like, you are going to burn yourself out. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm important. (laughs) I have to be there every day. And I really did. I, oh my gosh, I took phone calls from home. Like I became the COVID guru for like this area or for at least my hospital. It was like, doctors calling me how do I do this order how do I do this thing from a sister hospital um you know from home I was getting these calls or I would go in every day and it was just constant and man when you top 
that onto what COVID did to us by not giving us much of a social outlet and everything else that we went through, it was just like, boom, like that was it, you know, it was too much. Yeah, it really was. But, you know, I I really love how just open and honest you were about, you know, on paper, I had everything. I was checking off those boxes because so many of us have been there and in that same place. But, you know, it just doesn't feel aligned. And I think part of it is at over time, we grow and we evolve and just giving ourselves that permission. Yeah. It's okay. You're not the same person you were when you were 20, 30, you know, as you evolve, life is going to evolve, but you had the courage to be vulnerable and to speak up because yeah, there is a ton of shame surrounding it. Like, no, yeah. I have to be this person. Mm-hmm. I am being looked at as the leader. I can't, mm-hmm. you know, be vulnerable. But in yeah. having the courage to do that, you found out you weren't alone. Right. right. And so many people needed it too. Right. Oh. I just remember at Empower Her Live 2022 was when I started to have this realization, right? And I was like, this is like a whole thing. And Trent Shelton was there. I got to talk to him for a while personally. And I just was like, what do I do, bud? (laughs) Yeah. How do I fix this? I was like, you know, the answers I know you do. And he just looked at me. He's like, you got to figure out exactly what's going to help lift you out of this ditch and just go for it consistently. And that's like all you can do. And I just remember feeling like, well, that's bad advice. (laughs) That's I was amazing. like, tell me, what's the magical tool? Like, what's the exact thing? Like, I actually have a picture. I need to post this on my Instagram because I have a picture of me looking at him in that moment. Somebody caught it and my face is just like with like disgust. <laughs> I was like, that's not what I do. But he was like, yeah, you know what? Like, that's, you know, what like burnout or anything is. He's like, you have to start doing the things that are going to serve you now. Like, it's time to start focusing back on yourself. And looking back on all of that, I was like, wow, that's because... I was so deep into it still that I still didn't believe that it was time to like make those changes in my life that needed to be, to be made. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's like you said earlier, that is absolutely the first step is that awareness, like, okay, something is super off and no, like me, you know, I can't just fix it with a magic pill. Like it's time to like go deep, dive deep and figure out what's really going on. Like, why am I burnt out? What's, what am I doing that's causing me to have all these feelings? What am I doing too much of, too little of, and go from there? Yeah, no, that is so, so important. And yeah. gosh, just really diving deep right yeah. into it head yeah. on and developing awareness around it. Because yeah. like you said, sometimes you're so deep in it, you can't see mm-hmm. out. And that is a hard place to be. Mm-hmm. And I think too, what you touched upon is there is no quick fix. There's yeah. no magic pill. There's yeah. not one magical tool that is mm-hmm. going to work for everyone. It is doing the inner work and figuring out Mm -hmm. what things serve you. Mm -hmm. And that can be uncomfortable. I think a lot of times we're afraid to get quiet and afraid to confront these feelings. And we have a lot of guilt and shame around it. But at the end of the day, it's not selfish because you're learning to be a better you, to show up, to bring the world everything you bring to the table because that is needed. We need the impact that you're going to make. What you do is so, so valuable. So yeah, getting over that, that feeling of guilt, like, no, this is not, not selfish. This is needed. Yeah. 100% because when you think about it you're going to show up as a better wife mom you know sister daughter like whatever it is that you're doing in your life you could be a teacher a nurse like whatever you do it's so important to be you have to pour into yourself first and it's like we hear that all the time that it's such a cliche now and I really do think I need to find a better way to say this because I want it to hit hard like I want people to realize this for real but you know they tell you to put the oxygen mask on first onto yourself or that kind of thing and it's true though like if we are not taking care of ourselves if you're constantly burning your wick at both ends and you're burning yourself out you're not going to show up as the person you want to show up as right 
Exactly. And then you can't make the impact because you're so tired. You're so exhausted. Mm -hmm. You're so overwhelmed. All of the things. Yeah. I, that being said, you don't have to hit rock bottom yes. in yes. order to be experiencing burnout. And I think that's important yeah. to touch upon as well. What are your thoughts around that? Oh, I totally agree. Because in hindsight, like I said, in hindsight, if I had kind of like thought about that ahead of time, like, oh, I could burn myself out, things could have been so different. And it wouldn't have taken me six plus months to recover from this burnout. So ah, that's, I'm so glad you mentioned this, because that is a huge part of my mission right now is teaching people how to prevent it. And that's really what I want to start getting into. Because if we can prevent it, like you said, we're just going to be so much better off. So I think some of the first signs is really when you start to feel exhausted. And I know that like we always feel exhausted in our society these days, but you have to start paying attention to, am I just tired because I feel run down? Like I had a busy day, that kind of thing. Or, or am I literally just morally exhausted? Like, am I too exhausted to go do something I love? Am I too exhausted to have a great meal with my husband or, you know, spend time with my kids? Like the things that truly light you up, if we're too tired to actually go and do them, that's a major sign of burnout. And so is being irritable. So I know that a lot of us are irritable these days and we're, it's starting to become normalized. Like, you know, a lot of women get together, right? And, oh, I snapped at my husband last night. Oh no, that kind of thing. But like, we shouldn't really joke about that. We should honestly start paying attention to, am I showing up as the person I want to show up as? Do I feel like her? Do I act like her? Because if not, where am I lagging? Like, why was I ir irritable? Like, what had I done? What were the events leading up to that? Had I worked too long? Had I picked up an extra shift I didn't want to pick up? Or, you know, maybe I just put way too much on my calendar. So it's about paying attention to these signs, the little signs, before they become the full-blown big signs where you're calling out from work for a week plus, or you absolutely won't do anything. Like, the big signs are like, going to work, coming back home and going back to bed, maybe like shipping the kids off to go somewhere else so that you can just have me time, what we call me time, but you really don't do anything besides binge watch television. Like those are some pretty major signs that you really have to slow down and then yeah. just start unloading your calendar. Like that's like my big thing. I literally just went through and redid this for myself yesterday unloading my calendar. It's a big part of everything that I'm trying to do to heal. It's like, wow, I can squeeze. I'm an Aries. So I always love that, like that fire energy of like, I can get it all done. And that leads to burnout. So it's like, okay, hold on. It's fine. I can record these podcast episodes. I can do a two hour block and that's all I need. I don't need anything more than that right now. I can just kind of space it out over time. And that way it's not too much at one time. Yeah. Right? We just got to take our time with things. Exactly. Take our time and remember to live. I think we just get so stressed with the constant hustle and bustle of every day that really, as you do start to create more white space in your calendar, yes, it leads to so much just more life, more living, more just being in this beautiful world. We are not meant yeah. to be just hustle, 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 hustle. No. And that's what culture and society's told mm -hmm. us that you need for success. But we're here to tell you, uh-uh, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is no. a big old lie. But yes, I, I love how you talk about just awareness of those little signs, those little yeah. signs first. And that's key. Mm -hmm. And when you do have more white space, be intentional. Take control yes. of your time. Because I think a lot of times we think, oh, I don't have a choice. Yeah. Well, you do. And that's a harsh yeah. reality to face. The way you're spending your time is a choice. So are you 100%. just scrolling constantly mm -hmm. looking for inspiration and comparing yourself to the next woman? Mm -hmm. Or are you putting your phone down and just being present with your family? 100%. With 100%. What you're doing. I think we're so used to the noise that when we don't have it, it's kind of awkward. And so we try and fill it. Yeah. yeah. So this takes practice. It's not just going to be a one and done thing. And I think that's important to realize that, mm -hmm. again, it's developing the awareness of those little signs before you yes. are hitting 
yeah. rock bottom. And incorporate time into your calendar for yourself, like real yes. good time. Like, like you just said, have that time for that white space, get that mindfulness time. And for me, a lot of it was also going out into nature. So like, mm -hmm. as I started my healing journey, it was like, I did this actually a couple of years ago and now I'm doing it again, but I went a new place every week. And that was like a big deal for me. I was like, wow, I have my dog, you know, we can go hiking. Let's do a new trail every single week. And I cannot even like explain how amazing I felt. Like it was just changing up the routine, getting some sunshine, getting outside, moving your body. It will change everything. And you don't have to be like you're saying, you know, you don't have to be so burnt out that you need all of that like healing so quickly, right? You can start to do it preventatively. Yes. And that's probably one of the best ways is just incorporate that time. Yeah. Start there. Yes. And that is one of the best gifts mm -hmm. you can yeah. give to yourself, to your yes. family, to your loved ones. Yes. Because when you can fully show up as you and live this life, it's going to be contagious. The people yeah. around you will be like, what are you doing? How are you doing this? You know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can be that light and continue yeah. to spread this message and empower so many others to do the same. Yeah. I just want to add to that. Like, it's so, for me, it's becoming part of this thing. Like, have you heard the saying, if it's not like a hell yes, it's a hell no. Yeah. And it's starting to become that for me. I think about that so often. Like, do I really want to spend time doing this? And if I feel it in my gut that it's kind of a no, even kind of a no, then it's a no. Like if I right. can help it. Right. And I love this. I talk about this probably on almost every podcast episode, but I love the analogy of like buying the store-bought brownies versus staying up late to bake them. And I love that. It's like, if it feels good to you to stay up and bake those brownies for the PTA bake sale or whatever, go for it, like enjoy it. But if you feel stressed, like, oh, I have to do this and I have to do this. And my to-do list is all I have to's, then just skip it, buy them from the store. Like it's fine. Nobody's going to give a crap. Just exactly. you know, go for it. Um, and then just enjoy your life, like free up that time, you know? And, and yeah, like if your to-do list is all these have to's, you've got to cut them out. Yeah, exactly. So if yeah. you take nothing else away from this episode, yeah. Yeah. take that, yeah. get those have to's <laughs> off of there because yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody's yeah. going to remember if you bought store right. made yes. brownies. It's yeah. okay. You know, yeah. and I think we put these unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. on ourselves, mm -hmm. but in reality, not that big of a deal. So just right. release those unnecessary expectations and live this life for you. Yeah. Because yeah, if it's not a hell, a hell yes, it's a no. So yeah. start yes. using that and live this life. Mm -hmm. Audrey, this was amazing. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I could talk about this all day with you. Yeah, 100%. Where can we get into your world and learn Yay. more? Tell us all okay. about the podcast, uh, all of the things. I love it. So what I'm most excited about is I actually just got a text list. Um, so if you just text hello, Audrey Rose to 707-347-0723, you will be like the first to learn a lot of this exclusive um, workshops and virtual retreats and in-person retreats that I'm doing. I'm super excited. Um, and then of course, Instagram is at hello, Audrey Rose. And that's where links to everything can be found. It's probably the best place. Oh yeah. my gosh. It's so, so good. And what yes. is the name of your podcast, Audrey? So my podcast is ready to rise and it's also, you know, all about this stuff. I do. I think what I love the most about my podcast is I bring on a lot of guests. And so like, I don't have to be the expert on everything, right? I love just having conversations like we are right now, just about these things, these topics so that people can get many points of view on how to like live a life that they're obsessed to wake up for. So oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for pouring into our no, listeners thank today. You. Oh. I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm so thankful to have done so. Yes, yes. Oh, I appreciate you. And until next time, mamas, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.